In the previous lecture, we just initialized a DAG without task. In order to make a task, we need to use an operator to describe how this task must run. From the Airflow documentation, an operator is defined as follows. While DAGs describe how to run a workflow, operators determine what actually gets done. An operator describes a single task in a workflow. Operators are usually but not always atomic, meaning they can stand on their own and don't need to share resources with any other operators. The DAG will make sure that operators run in the correct certain order. Other than those dependencies, operators generally run independently. In fact, they may run on two completely different machines for scalability reasons. Just to keep key points, keep in mind that an operator is the definition of a single task. It should be idempotent, meaning your operator should produce the same result regardless of how many times it is run. It can retry your task automatically in case of a failure. A task is created by instantiating an operator class. An operator defines the nature of this task and how should it be executed. And when an operator is instantiated, this task becomes a node in your DAG. Apache Airflow provides many operators that will fit most of your needs. Among the most important ones, you have the bash operator to execute a bash command. You have the Python operator to call an arbitrary Python function. There is also the email operator, which can be very useful, for example, if you want to be warned that your data pipeline finished. And there are many other operators to interact with databases, such as MySQL operator, Postgre operator, and so on. As we will see in the last section of this course, you can also create your own operators, which makes Apache Airflow very flexible. All operators inherit from the class base operator, so if you want to create your own operator, you will have to use this class. And there are actually three types of operators. The first one is the action operators that perform an action, such as bash operator, Python operator, and email operator. Then we have transfer operators that move data from one system to another, such as presto to MySQL operator, or SFTP operator. And finally, we have sensor operators waiting for data to arrive at a defined location. Let's zoom on the transfer and sensor operators, which are different than the action operators that you will use very often. Transfer operators are operators that move data from one system to another. Data will be pulled out from the source, staged on the machine where the executor is running, and then transferred to the target system. Because the data are going to be loaded in the memory of the machine, don't use these operators if you are dealing with a large amount of data. Why? Because you can get an actually out of memory error, which will lead to the crash of your executor. Sensor operators inherit of base sensor operator, which inherits of base operator, and they are useful for monitoring external processes, like waiting for files to be uploaded in HDFS or a partition appearing in Hive. They are basically long running tasks, and the sensor operator has a POC method called repeatedly until it returns true. It is the method used for monitoring the external process. And it's now time for coding time. Let's create some amazing tasks using the operators we've just learned. See you in the next lecture.